In this Copilot Unplugged video, I want to talk about how you can create descriptions using AI so that Copilot can better use and understand the fields that are in your model. So we already talked about how, for example, if you create a measure that you can generate descriptions for that measure using Copilot, but you can only do this with Copilot using measures. So you can't do it with columns or tables and it's only going to do it for one at a time. Now, what if you need to create descriptions for a lot of other stuff? So for example, I'm just starting to create a semantic model about my workout data at the gym, and I have all of the stuff that I need to rename, and I need to create descriptions, I need to create synonyms, and it's going to be a lot of work. This is going to be quite a large model with a lot of information. So I could, of course, write these descriptions myself manually, but it would be nice if I could get a head start using AI somehow, and then I could iterate based off of that. So there's two different ways that I'm going to show you. Method number one is using Tyndall scripting, which is a feature in Power BI Desktop that's currently in preview, together with VS Code, which is an editor. So it's a text editor that you can use to work with code, and GitHub Copilot, which is something that you can use for free for a limited amount, in order to get AI to make changes to things in VS Code, for example. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on this Timdall view, and we can now create a Timdall script. So I'm going to drag my routines table onto the screen here. And this is what a Timdall script looks like. So it starts out with this create or replace, and then we have the Timdall metadata for our table. So we have, for example, a declaration of the object types like table or column, followed by their names. And then we also have their properties. With Timdall scripting, you can, of course, work with this script manually, pressing control space to see what properties are available, for instance. And you can also write those descriptions yourself. And those descriptions can have the syntax like this is a description. And if you want to make that change, you can just click apply and then it's going to make the change to your model. So in a nutshell, Timdall scripting is a way to be able to programmatically work with and modify your model rather than using the user interface. And this allows you to make multiple changes at once. For example, if I wanted to change multiple things at once using a find and replace or selecting them with keyboard shortcuts, Control D or Control Shift L, for instance. Now that I've applied that change, so you can see that if we go to the field workout ID, that we now have applied the description. But again, I don't want to do this one at a time. I want to use AI to start generating these descriptions. So what I could actually do is I could open VS Code and then Control O, I'm going to open. And I've saved my model as a PBIP or Power BI project file. So this takes my model and report and it splits it up into multiple files in a project. And I now have a folder structure for my model and my report. So I'm going to open semantic model. I'm going to open Timdall scripts, which is where my scripts are located. And I'm just going to open this script, script one. So currently it's empty. I need to go back and I need to save this and then go back. And we see that we have the Timdall script here. And I am using the Timdall extension from Microsoft in order to be able to get the appropriate syntax highlighting like we see here. So I'm just going to close this. Now we are going to get GitHub Copilot to make these changes for us. So GitHub Copilot is what we see up here. If you click this button, it can help you with the initial setup. Uh, so like I said, you can have GitHub Copilot for free like this and you get a certain number of chat messages and co code completions that you can do. So that's what we're actually going to do, is we're going to ask GitHub Copilot to create a description for each one of our columns. So can you please suggest descriptions for each one of the columns in this table using the syntax where the description occurs before the declaration of the column, so column and then column name with three slashes, slash, 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 
please include the description as a maximum of three bullet points like this example and ensure that each description is useful and concise. Generate a description for each column. All right, so we've created our prompt. We're gonna press Control Enter, and then uh, the request failed. Uh, that's unfortunate, so we'll try that again. So I'm just going to open a new Copilot edit, and then we'll try it again. Okay, so now it's going to go through and it's going to start generating the edits in the code as we go. So it's going to go through our script and hopefully it's going to add our uh, descriptions to each one of the columns. And we're waiting and we're waiting. Okay something is happening. All right, so now it's going through and it's editing the code. It's taking quite a long time. And we see that it is starting to add the descriptions. So it's adding the descriptions to each one of our columns. It's applying the edits and we can see the progress as we're going. So we can wait for this to complete. And when it's done, then we can check each one of these. But the nice thing is that while it, this is happening, we can go through and check each one of these as we go and know which one of these we should actually change. So for example, here it's saying the workout ID is the unique identifier for the workout. That's correct. Used to track individual workout sessions. Yes, maps to the source column workout ID. So we can see that it's taking the context of, for example, the properties inside of it. So this might not necessarily be helpful. So we would want to modify this in order for it to be as useful as we can. So I'm not going to do that necessarily in this example uh, but what you would need to do is you would need to make sure that you go through each one of these and then you you know manually modify it yourself to make sure that this is the most useful description possible so i don't actually like that in the third bullet point it's always do talking about the source column i don't think that's particularly helpful i think instead it would be more helpful if we describe the business context so like in the previous video that I did, I talked about when useful descriptions, when descriptions are useful actually. And that this is, you know, what we're looking at here is largely, you know, it could be a nice starting point, but uh, it's largely a technical description, but this is at least going to, you know, get us started. So once we finish using GitHub Copilot, it's going to show us here in the scroll bar, we can see that it's made all the changes to all the columns. We can also see that in this little mini map. And of course, it also shows us anything that it removed and anything that it added. So if we're happy with this, we can say keep. So I'm actually not happy with this, um, but we'll just say for the sake of, you know, that we'll keep it, we'll save it. And we can now copy and then paste this in here in our Timdall script window. And if we run this script, now it's going to apply those changes and it will give all of the descriptions to all of our columns. So that could save you a lot of time or at least getting started. Remember, however, this isn't a magic bullet and these descriptions need to be manually updated in order to be as useful as possible. So the descriptions that we generated here are not the solution. This would be a starting point, okay? So let's press Control Z and then we're going to overwrite these changes here. I could have actually just done that here. So apply, I'm gonna get rid of those descriptions because I'm gonna show you now the second way to do this. And this is using tabular editor C sharp scripts together with uh, an API for an LLM. So here in GitHub Copilot, so I was choosing, you know, I'm using GPT 4.0. I could also use Cloud 3.5 Sonnet or Gemini. Um, and I'm using the user interface here. Uh, the advantage is that it's taking into consideration the other information that's in this script, and we can also give it other files to provide additional more useful context. Now, I could also do this using Tabular Editor, and I can create my own custom solution. So if I go in Tabular Editor, <coughs> I can connect to the local model. So we see we have the model here on the right-hand side in the Tom Explorer. We have the properties here on the left, including the description. So 
So I'm just going to make sure that I have the model up to date. And then I want to generate these descriptions. So I've already created a macro, for example, called generate descriptions, which I've created as a custom button and I've added it to a toolbar and I've also saved it as a macro. So what I can actually do is I can go down to routines, for example, I can select these two columns or any combination of columns or measures that I want. And then I can go in my macros here and we can't see it. So maybe I'll, I'll drag this over so that it's more visible. So AI, Claude, generate descriptions. And I also have that map to shift alt C. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that keyboard shortcut, uh, shift alt C. Uh, that doesn't work because it calls up this column thing, but we'll push this button here. So that's actually going to use the macro that I've created. It's going to process those two objects, executing the macro, and then it adds the descriptions to those two objects. And I can check that when I select them here, that these are the descriptions that have now been added, and I would have to do the exact same thing. So the advantage here is when I'm using this script, and I'll provide this script uh, in the uh, description of the video in the doobly-doo so that you can go and get it like a github gist or something and all you need to do is you need to get your api key for claude in this case so i'm using claude 3.7 sonnet it's very easy this is something that i actually did in just a few minutes by just getting the api key from claude asking claude to generate this script i gave it two examples of scripts that use apis that i found on the internet and then in one shot it generated for me a working script that i could use and save as a macro so again, I can now take this and I can run it. So either using the menu here, using this button, or by saving it as a keyboard shortcut. And I would have to then use a keyboard shortcut that uh, will work in this case. So I'm gonna actually show you how to set those custom keyboard shortcuts and I'm gonna get it working because I'm kind of annoyed that that didn't work. So I'm gonna go down here to macros. It's the latest macro, Shift-Alt-C didn't work. So I'm gonna do Control shift c instead. All right, now let's try it out here. Split type and start time, Control shift c and it's working. So it's processing these two objects, executing the macro, and we've added those two descriptions, and we got them. So again, same thing, right? We would need to go through, check this manually, but the difference is that we can modify the prompt a little bit, so in our script, and we can take into account in Tabular Editor, we can pull different metadata that we think would be useful um, in order to really customize this to our liking. And the advantage is too that we can make this a little bit more efficient because we can save it as a macro and reuse it. So now any model that I use, presuming that this isn't sensitive or confidential information, I could use this uh, macro to be able to generate the description. And I can also of course use it to do other things like generating translations, or whatever. So this is just an example of how you can get started using AI creating descriptions. As a summary, you can use uh, Tyndall scripts together with um, VS Code and GitHub Copilot. Uh, it works quite well, it's nice. You just have to make sure you save it as a PBIP file so you can access those Tyndall scripts. And you know, GitHub Copilot is free, so it's, it gives you a nice start. Um, and with the Tyndall scripts, it's fairly straightforward to just copy and paste it. So no third party tools required. Uh, or you could also use tabular editor with C sharp scripts. You can use AI tools to generate those C sharp scripts. So I generated one in one shot using Claude, for instance. Uh, and then you just need the API key for your LLM of choice. And then you can customize this script, save it as a macro, use it as a custom button or a custom keyboard shortcut. So it's really convenient that way if you want to do it to any other columns. You just press that shortcut and go, and it's scalable, very easy to do in that regard. And this can save you a lot of time. It's just super duper important that whenever you're using AI for these approaches, same thing with Copilot, then you want to go through and you want to validate those and you want to make sure those descriptions are going to be as useful as possible, not only for people, but also for Copilot, if you're going to have Copilot consuming your semantic model, for instance, all right? So that's everything. I'll see you in the next video, I guess.